Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, September 18th, 2009. We do have some northwest swell in the water. Got that backing off over the weekend. A little bit of southern hemi coming in Sunday. Also looks like we might be seeing something from T.S. Marty as that system is coming to its peak right now. Big heat wave on for next week, it looks like, uh, according to what the models are saying right now, which means we could also see our first Santa Ana of the season. We could be seeing some offshore winds next week. Got a tidal swing to deal with, though. Wanted to show you how everything is coming together on the models to bring that all together, as well as some possible stuff still from Choi Wong although that's not looking all that great right now by the looks of things on today's model run and a little bit of stuff still uh, lingering around in the southern hemisphere to bring us some stuff around the 25th, 26th as well. So I wanted to show you everything that's going on. This is what's happening right now. Starting out looking at the weather models, there's a few things to note here uh, that will be causing some differences in our winds and swell over the next few days. First thing on the charts here, we've got down to our south, that's Tropical Storm Marty. That'll be throwing us some swell in around by Sunday, although we'll be seeing some southern hemisphere then. Probably won't change that much in size from the looks of things right now. Uh, we also have high pressure moving into the area, and that's the big name of the game when it comes to weather over the next few days, is that will be expanding. If we start moving the models forward in time, we can start seeing how that high pressure would start moving more toward our region expanding from the Pacific. That would then be expanding in the Pacific, that blue area becoming quite a bit larger. Really setting up shop then here. This is looking at around early Monday time frame where all of a sudden the center of the high is right off of the uh, Northern California border. And then when we start looking into the Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday time frame, large high pressure sitting over the America West, but there's this area of low pressure that could retrograde and move back from the continental United States. And that could have a major effect on what would happen from the winds and the weather as well as that would start pinching off that high. So we have to see how that develops over the next couple days. The wind models right now, though, are showing the possibility of a Santa Ana next week. This is a typical model that's showing with the arrows the direction of the wind and the color showing the speed, with blue being very weak, green being stronger, and red being a lot stronger. So we can see the direction of the winds. Typical, this would be uh, about Friday afternoon, some onshore winds. This would be then Saturday afternoon. We could see that Saturday afternoon would still have some fairly strong onshore winds blowing, typical uh, for our afternoon onshore breezes. Then when we move out a little bit more, though, we're taking a look here Sunday morning morning, kind of Sunday more around noon. Not a whole lot of direction from those winds, kind of just meandering about. A lot of blue in there, which means kind of weak winds, so kind of calming around Sunday morning. And when we move out a little bit more and we take a look, this would be Monday morning. We can start seeing those arrows are starting to point more towards offshore, and we can see some strength inland. Those are from those green and yellow colors showing that we'd be getting some stronger Santa Ana breezes, but not so strong as to be too damaging along the coast at least. Moss Guidance wind charts also seem to jive with this. This is a chart from the National Weather Service taking a point in the area just not that far from Point Magoo Inland just to show the example of some of those Santa Ana winds coming in. We can see from the wind barbs the direction once we get into around Tuesday morning after daybreak. We get start seeing 17 mile an hour winds from the northeast, 24 to then 26 mile an hour gusts. Take a look though down toward the beach and this is more of the San Diego area where we see then less of the offshore flow. We can still see though a nice mild Santa Ana blowing from the east north east about seven miles an hour maybe five miles an hour then in the afternoon Take a look now at the wave analysis models. This is where we're going to see the rubber meet the road once again on exactly what's going to happen swell-wise for Southern California. Quite a few things to mention here. First off, of course, there's Tropical Storm Marty. We can see that uh, probably about with a 12-foot seas max located about uh, 600 miles or so to our south. That should start bringing some swell into our area probably Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. And we've got some wind swell setting off the coast. And, of course, with the northwest ground swell that's in the water right now, that should keep us in waves on Saturday morning from the northwest. A little bit more activity we can also see up here in the Gulf and Aleutian area. Not a whole lot, but we should still see a little bit more activity start coming our way early next week, but not a whole lot will be coming out of this. Then, of course, we've got over in the western Pacific, Choi Wan at uh, Super Typhoon. I've been talking about this past week. Still a fairly strong system blowing over 130 knot winds. It's going to be slamming uh, Japan with some very large seas as the fetch right now has 40 uh, foot seas in it. But for us getting caught in the gyre, it's a little bit of a different 
different stories. We move the models forward in time. We can see Choi Wan starting to move up toward Japan, that up toward Lucian's. Looks like it would hold some strength, but then it starts breaking apart on this morning's models, and that isn't exactly what models were saying over the last couple days. That's not good news necessarily, although uh, as we move the models a little bit more forward in time, we can see that it would, as it comes up toward the Aleutians, it may start getting a little bit of a reform, but it'd have to get some pretty good size Cs. In fact, if we go out, here's a 144-hour model, we can see that it might gain once again 25 to 30 foot Cs, but that's a little too early to call today. But even if Choi Wan doesn't get near the Aleutians and does a reform, we do know that some energy would be thrown our way once it starts nearing Japan and starts turning toward our area in the gyre. This can be seen on the period model showing Choi Wan's energy. Moving these models forward in time, we can see how that energy would start spreading out, being thrown across the Pacific, even more towards Southern California. In fact, looking here 108 hours out and a little bit more at 132 hours out, that location from California is probably about three to four days. So that means we could still see some swell in around the 26th, 27th, although it doesn't look like it would be a lot, maybe about chest to head high at the most. I'm counting on about chest high at this point, but once again, it's still just a little early to call on what's going to happen with Choi Wan. Take a look down to the southern hemisphere. This is a little bit of a blast to the past. That was that system here that uh, peaked a few days ago uh, down around Chile. Once again, didn't have a favorable trajectory for us, but we should be seeing some swell coming in around Sunday and then in through the first of the week. And so that's also why with this swell, we're probably not going to see much difference when we're talking about stuff coming up from uh, TS Marty, which would be arriving uh, Sunday afternoon, probably into Monday morning. Take a look at today's model run, though. We can still see something uh, breaking off Antarctica uh, down below French Polynesia. Just a minor fetch, really, because of its position. Moving far to the east as we move the models forward in time, that's bad news for swell. It means that it's not going to be throwing very much energy our way. In fact, moving the models out even a little bit more in time, out to about 48 hours. We can see here that's still not a whole lot going on. A little bit of something, though, coming up from this around the 25th, 26th time frame, but just not a whole heck of a lot for swell. Also just wanted to mention we are in a tidal swing, and we can see this on these charts. This is one of the uh, tide charts generated over at my free site, wavecast.com. We can see that the tides would be well above six feet down around the California coast. This particular tide table is from San Diego, but most of the California coast and SoCal is going to be seeing the same type of tidal swing. We can see that that's going to be disrupting the uh, mid-morning sessions, causing some very deep tides, and that, of course, can slow down many breaks, especially the reefs and points. So that's how things are shaping up right now. We do have some northwest swell in the water right now, about chest ahead. Uh, that should be lingering into Saturday, although the swell will be backing down, backing down more on Sunday then. Although some southern hemisphere and some uh, tropical stuff from Marty should be coming up to keep uh, south-facing breaks. And about chest high surf, although west-facing breaks will be seeing a decline. Steady flow of southern hemi energy next week then. Uh, not all that great, but we should be then seeing an offshore flow from possible Santa Ana building. That Santa Ana strength is still a little bit unknown, but it looks right now it'll be mild along the coast. Temperature's probably well into the 80s. Looks like we're still going to probably see some stuff out of Choi Wan, although weaker than expected. Uh, right now, the numbers say that'll probably be at least chest to shoulder high, but that's far too early to call today. Should be seeing a little bit of sus stuff coming out of the southern hemisphere on the 25th and 26th as well. But right now, that's not looking to be much above waist to chest high. Either case, though, I'll be keeping an eye on it. I'll be keeping you posted. You can always check out my SoCal Surf Report at wetsand.com for all the ETAs on the swell, wind, weather, tide, and more. And you can always check out 24 hours, seven days a week, my free forecasting site, Wave wavecast.com and to stay abreast on what's breaking in socal you can check out my tweets over at twitter.com slash wavecast until next time take care be safe and smile in the lineup